what the rock is cooking. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a WWE lesson talk show. The first one of 2017 coming a little later than usual with Luis Rock Jones and Sean Randy Smith. We are, as I just said, coming at you a little bit later than we normally would due to some technical areas on a certain person's part. Yes, but they might get a Blame the Y family. <laughs> we are coming at you with NXT TakeOver San Antonio and Royal Rumble all put into one. Yes, first we'll focus on NXT San Antonio which uh, came at uh, the night before the Royal Rumble, also from San Antonio, as you can tell by the name. <laughs> the match card featured five matches which started with Eric Young taking on the perfect 10 Ty Ginger and as I say I don't think there was any surprise in this result partly because of uh, who Eric Young has aligned himself with so after a Crown on to uh, 11 minute match, Eric Young turned out to be victorious. Yes, unfortunately. Next we saw Roderick Strong go one on one against Ander Adams. Let's just move on to Which uh, Logic Strong won with a slick kick. What does that sound familiar? Uh, probably because it's some, something similar to uh, other kicks we've seen in the company. Oh, yes. Next, we ha- after that, we had the three championships in NXT defended. The first one being. First one being the NXT Tag Team Championships, when the Authors of Pain challenged the team of Do It Yourself, of DIY. otherwise known as DIY, in Johnny Gargano and Tom So Chipper. Now, I'm not saying that this was not unexpected. It's because of who the Office of Pain are managed by, with uh, Paul Irwin having managed some of the most famous teams in the wrestling business. That combined with the fact that the Office of Pain are undefeated in NXT, having won the Dusty Worlds tournament, tag team tournament, being the second team to do so. It was not surprising to see new NXT tag team champions crowned. Mm. 
And then we then we moved on to the NXT Women's Championship. Asuka in the championship against Nikki Cross, Billy Kay, and Pitch and Peach and Rios. I don't know, this was, you could argue that this was like a, f possibly a free on one type of thing. Yes. Because, well, because K and Ross are more or less a tag team than themselves. Yes, but the eventual winner after a very entertaining match was... Well, first of all, K and Ross decided to eliminate... Billy decided to eliminate Nikki Cross by putting her through an announce table. Not surprising. They got a near fall on Asuka with a neck breaker. But in the end, it was a spin kick followed by a roundhouse kick for Asuka to retain the women's championship and ve very important side note here Asuka is currently is just a couple of days away from becoming the longest reigning NXT women's champion overtaking the record of 308 days set by the inaugural champion Paige Furthermore, Asuka is also approaching the possibility of being the first women wrestler in NXT to hold the championship for a year, as she won it the night before WrestleMania last year. Yes, before we get to the main event, so NXT, as we said, is, uh, is uh, called NXT TakeOver, and a certain person decided to try and take over the show because he has some unfinished business with the creator of NXT. And NXT is where it all started for this person. We are, of course, talking about the one, the only, Seth Rollins. Yeah, Seth Rollins tried to call out Triple H. Triple H did then come out. Then Triple H went, nah, you know what? I'll call security guard and Yes, proven as we've known ever since he uh, put on that uh, suit that he is a... Uh, Spineless coward. Pretty much got in one. Now on to the uh, main event. The main event saw the two time NXT champion Shinsuke Nakamura defending the NXT championship against Mr. Glorious in Bobby Roode, who was looking for a Glorious night in the on the summit, the NXT champion. Yeah, now this match on the whole was actually pretty good. This match was good. I mean, I wouldn't be much surprised. Shinsuke Nakamura is one of the best workers I've seen recently, and it's nothing against Bobby Roode because he's a good worker as well. I was. How do I say this? Slightly confused with the ending of the match, so. Me too. Because the match ended with uh, Sitsuke Nakamura appealing to suffer what looks like a knee injury. After. Bobby Roode targeted as the leg throughout the match. And Bob and 
Both Nakamura was able to hit for killing Saf for a near fall and then performed the second one. He was unable to pin him. The referee and doctors came out to uh, possibly try and stop Nakamura from uh, finishing the match. Nakamura insisted on uh, keeping the match on. We had uh, the glorious DDT performed, but uh, Bobby, uh, Nakamura was able to kick out. Well, then we went back to a submission hold with the, uh, cat, was it, Boston Crab, I believe it was. When that didn't work, we went back to a final glorious DDT to get the 1, 2, 3, which means the glorious NXT Championship reign of Bobby Roode has begun. Didn't exactly take them long though, did it? No, not at all. They seem to be doing that quite a lot of stars from NXT. I mean, AJ Styles was champion within the uh, first few months of his move to WWE, although he was in Japan first. Speaking of AJ Styles, we shall now move on to the Royal Rumble. Which of course, 20 years after 1997, came at us from the San Antonio Alder Dome. But more importantly than that, begun what, is, or what has become known as the road to WrestleMania. The kickoff saw so three matches on it, which in itself is a bit unusual. Yes. First, we had SmackDown present a six woman tag team match of Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi. SmackDown Women's Champion. Alexa Bliss, the returning Nicky, Mickey James, or La, La Bluey, whatever you want to call her these days, <laughs> and Natalia. You can't make a mind of whether she wants to attack Zena or Bella. Or both. But uh, personally, after fair action going back and forth as they do in these matches. The ultimate decision came down to uh, Naomi pinning Alexa Bliss and therefore picking up the victory for Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella and Naomi. Side note, Naomi would... uh, Pin Alexa Bliss again on Tuesday's edition of SmackDown, which has led to an interesting development when SmackDown presents the Elimination Chamber next week, which we will, which we will, which we will, we will bring the posts uh, please show to you next week as well. Yes, for club in Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson would be taking on the team of Double O Cesaro and Seamus. With a very interesting stipulation added to the match. Yes, now what two referees because of some tactics and things that have been going on during the rivalry between these two. However, two referees 
were not a uh, able to stop this ending of this match because Seamus inadvertently broke Hick the first referee, causing the second referee to uh, enter the lane and take over the match. This, unfortunately, caused caused the pinfall to be done in a, do in a dodgy way with grabbing onto the tights pick with Ruth Garros and Carl Anderson picking up for 1-2-3 and becoming the new Raw Tag Team Champions which I will admit is overdue yes The next kickoff match I am not even going to bother going into much detail in because let's just be honest it was a squash. And Nia Jax practically threw around like a glad doll and pinned her. The main card opened up with uh, the Raw Women's Championship match between Charlotte Flair and Bailey. Now, I really wanted Bailey to win this match. I think I think most of the UWWE universe wanted Bailey to win this match, not just because she's a great wrestler, but because of the story. The story basically being that. Uh, Bailey is a fan living her dream whilst Charlotte was born into the industry with a silver spoon in her mouth. No offence, Rick. Yes, no offence, my legend. Um, after what was a good match with several spots, including a flying elbow from Bailey, which played tribute not just to Macho Man Randy Savage but also to uh, San Antonio's own Shawn Michaels it was ultimately a natural selection onto the apron of the, on the side of the ring which caused the one to flee and for Sasha Banks, uh, Sasha Banks, excuse me, Charlotte, Charlotte to retain the women's championship. Whilst, yeah. I, whilst I would have liked Bailey to win this match, I personally think and um, I would like to believe that Vince McMahon would agree with me that you that if you're going to have Bailey win the women's championship. You do it at the big stage of WrestleMania. Fun fact, though, that win also means that Charlotte has one-on-one -on -one championship wins. The same the same number of championship wins on pay-per-view. That her father has world championships. Because Charlotte is 16 in O. It's been a long time since we've had a number in O on it. Undertaker. Yes, Undertaker. In championship matches on pay per view. In fact, I believe that Charlotte has not lost a championship match on pay-per-view since she actually originally became the Divas Champion I follow in this uh, Raw Women's Championship match we moved on to the Universal Championship match between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns which had Kevin Owens' best friend, Chris Jericho, suspended above the lane in a sack cage. NXT, anyone? The weird thing was that 
if you wanted to negate the fact of Jericho interfering or anyone else interfering for that matter, why would you make it a no disqualification match as well? I honestly don't know what WWE were thinking there. But in any event, we had a good match, a way better match than I think a lot of people were expecting, with some sickening spots. Roman Reigns got uh, a frog splashed through a table. Yes. And that was Kevin Owens' his own creation with the chairs. Just before the Roman Reigns wins the match, how will people Yes, for some bizarre reason, Braun Strowman decided to interject himself into this match. Whether it was because of what happened with Goldberg and Roman both spearing him on Raw a couple of weeks ago, or whether he had his uh, own agenda, we don't know. Well, we would find out on Raw, but at that point we didn't know. Which is actually, which I can accept at the minute, depending on what the plan is for WrestleMania. Yes. The next match was some cruiserweight action. When Rich Swan would defend the cruiserweight championship against the man that gravity forgot and the self-progressed kin of the cruiserweights Neville. Let's just sure this match was what we expect Well you mean high flying and all of that? Yes. After some uh, back and forth action, it was ultimately Neville who forced Swan to tap out to the uh, double anger hook cross face, although I feel like I shouldn't say cross face. Cross face. Yes. Cross face. 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 Cross call himself king of the cruiserweights at least for the time being <laughs> next we moved on to the uh, Smackdown ch- championship match on the main card when AJ Styles would defend the WWE championship against John Cena now these Two had gone face to face in singles action at Money in the Bank and Survivor Series in previous years. Both of which had been won by the phenomenal one. And also, they had faced each other in a triple threat match situation. In which Dean Ambrose was also involved for the WWE Championship. Now, fun fact going into this match was the situation that uh, over over his history at the Royal Rumble, John Cena had never lost a singles WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. And he was of course looking for... Who is 
record time 16th WWE Championship or World Championship tying the record with the one and only the crown. So, Rick, Rick Flair and John Cena go into tie the record. Tie slash break the record. And this match goes down as match of the night. In my opinion. And probably in most fans' opinion. Wait, we're still talking about the WWE Championship match here. Oh, yes. There were spots and spots and spots in this match. It's hard to know where to go with people with phenomenal forearms. AJ Styles even mimicking John Cena. The Styles cross. What got me though was the way that this match ended. Because the match ended with uh, after John Cena had hit a super attitude adjustment from the top rope or middle rope, and AJ Styles kicked out. AJ Styles would uh, go for a phenomenal forearm. Only to be caught in the second attitude adjustment and John Cena doing something I have never seen him do before would put an exclamation mark on it when after hitting a second attitude adjustment he would roll through, pick up AJ Styles and hit him with a third attitude adjustment to get the pin for and for the 16th time, John Cena can say, The champ is here. Question is though, will he be the champ at WrestleMania? Because, like I said, like we've said, this next Sunday he walks through the Elimination Chamber. Royal Rumble match. 30 superstars. One prize. A main event championship match at WrestleMania. So, let's go through the rules first of all. Two superstars, numbers one and two, starting the win. Every two minutes, another superstar would enter elimination would occur when you were thrown over the top rope with both feet landing on the floor and of course the last person in the ring would be the winner and would the main event Wrestlemania so the way we are going to do this we are going to run through each entrant into the Royal Rumble match in order then go back through to say who they were eliminated by Entrant number one was Big Cass Entrant number two was Chris Jericho Number three was Kalisto Number four, we saw Mojo Rowley. Number five was the gentleman of the cruiserweight division, Jack Gallagher. Number six was the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Number seven was Braun Strowman, who we'd already seen earlier in the night. Number eight was Sami Zayn. 
Number nine was The Big Show. Number ten was The Perfect Ten from NXT Ty Zillinger. Number eleven was everyone's favourite little man, James Ellsworth. Number twelve, we saw the Intercontinental Champion Dean Ambrose. Unlucky number thirteen, or maybe not, was Baron Corbin. Number fourteen was Kofi Kingston. Number 15, The Miz. Number 16, Seamus. Number 17, was Big E. Number 18, was Rusev. Number 19, was Devolo Cesaro. Number 20, was Xavier Woods. Number 21, was Bray Wyatt. Number 22, was Apollo Crews. Number 23 was Randy Orton. Number 24 was Dolph Ziggler. Number 25 was Luke Harper. Number 26 was Brock Lesnar. Number 27 was Enzo Amore. Number 28 was Goldberg. Number 29 was The Undertaker. And ludicrously enough, number 30 was Roman Reigns. Okay, so going back up to the top. Big Cass was eliminated by Braun Strowman. Chris Jericho was eliminated by Roman Reigns. Kalisto was eliminated by Braun Strowman. Rojo Raleigh was eliminated by Braun Strowman. Jack Gallagher was eliminated by Mark Henry. Mark Henry was eliminated by Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman was eliminated by Baron Corbin. Sami Zayn was eliminated by The Undertaker. Big Show was eliminated by... Braun Strowman. Ty Gillinger was eliminated by Braun Strowman. James Ellsworth was eliminated by Braun Strowman. Dean Ambrose was eliminated by Brock Lesnar. Baron Corbin was eliminated by The Undertaker. Kofi Kingston was eliminated by Cesaro. The Miz was eliminated by The Undertaker. Seamus was eliminated by Chris Jericho. Big E was eliminated by Seamus and Cesaro. Rusev was eliminated by Goldberg. Cesaro was eliminated by Chris Jericho. Xavier Woods was eliminated by Seamus. Bray Wyatt was eliminated by Roman Reigns. Apollo Crews was eliminated by Luke Harper. Dolph Ziggler was eliminated by Brock Lesnar. Luke Harper was eliminated by Goldberg. Brock Lesnar was eliminated by Goldberg in 22 seconds. Enzo Amore was eliminated by Brock Lesnar in 18 seconds. Goldberg was eliminated by The Undertaker. The Undertaker was eliminated by Roman Reigns. The final two men in the ring were Roman Reigns and Randy Orton. And ultimately, Roman Reigns was eliminated by Randy Orton, which means that the winner of the Royal Rumble match and heading to the main event of WrestleMania, Randy Orton, for the second time in his career. Yes, I'm going to WrestleMania, baby. Randy Orton is going to WrestleMania. The question is, who 
will be facing him at WrestleMania because he has already opted to go for the WWE Championship. And like we said, the question is who, or as the or as the New Day would say it, who, who, who. who? The the answer to all this and more will be answered next week when SmackDown presents the Elimination Chamber. Join us then. Well, until then, he's been. And I've been Wistful Rock Jones.